Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So today I'm gonna to be taking you through a Facebook ads testing strategy, perfect for the person who's just completed their Shopify store and they're ready to get started with testing some products. Or perhaps even you've tested some products, you're not really sure what to make of the results, not really sure what to do next. Um, then hopefully by watching this video, it'll give you kind of like a better idea and a direction to go in. This video is kind of like a follow-up from my previous video too, where I went over the biggest mistakes I see people making when it comes to Facebook ads in terms of how much money it's costing them, kind of like a follow one from that um, and then there's going to be another follow-on video from this one which is going to be kind of like a part two so today we're going to be testing and then in this next video we're going to be scaling so whenever you're running Facebook ads you're either doing one of two things you're testing to go out there and collect data to see where kind of like the most interest comes from and then you're going to use that data to then scale the best performing ad sets to the point where they become optimized and the pixel becomes matured ads start delivering more efficiently and ultimately more profitably too so that's the topic of the video then thanks for tuning in um, i hope you enjoy it i hope you learn something new as well um, if you do leave a comment down below let me know what you took away from this video don't forget to subscribe as well of course if you want to see part two um, and let's jump straight into it so the products i'm going to be showing you this testing strategy for is the one on screen now so as you can see it's this pet pool um, kind of like a perfect product something I'm actually gonna be selling myself um, come summertime here in the UK with the weather improving the clocks are going forward next week then a product like this is perfect for this sort of time of season. The popularity is going to be increasing. There's going to be more and more people looking for a particular product like this. I find as well when doing these kind of like Facebook strategy examples, it's helpful to have a product in mind rather than just give you super broad advice that is difficult to follow, at least with a specific product. I can kind of talk you through my way of thinking and why I choose the certain audiences and so on and so forth. So this is the product then. Let's jump straight into the strategy itself. So to start the video, I'm going to take you through the strategy which I've laid out here in a Google Doc um, and then we'll jump into my ads manager account and I'll actually show you um, in real time how to set it up. So to start off it's going to be a conversion campaign we want to find audiences which are most interested and most likely to buy our product so it's going to be a purchase objective conversion campaign. The runtime is going to be three days the average Facebook user um, I think it's like once over the course of every two days. So by running for a full three days, then basically you're gonna capture the average Facebook user, which is ideal for when you're running a test. It's gonna be 10 ad sets, and in each ad set, there's gonna be a unique audience. So you may hear me say audience instead of ad set um, throughout this video. So on screen, as you can see, there's three different ad sets split up here. Um, there should be 10, but there's not enough room on the screen to get every single one. And the, the rules and the criteria change in a pattern, so there's no need to show you every Every single ad set or every single audience because you just follow up. I'll explain in a second. So the ad creative, the product you're selling has to be the same, it has to be a fair test. Otherwise, when it comes to comparing the data at the end, then it's gonna skew your decisions and ultimately lead to you making the wrong decisions. As I've already mentioned, it's gonna be a conversion campaign with a purchase objective, 18 to 65, and all genders. We wanna go super broad, put it out to everybody, every demographic, pretty much. Um, and see kind of like where the bites or where the hits come from and then we can narrow down and focus on that when it comes to the optimization and the scaling. In terms of the country, stick to one country for now um, and stick to the base currency of your Shopify store too. The audience size, so it's in bold because this is where the changes are going to happen. Essentially every ad set is the same apart from the actual audience size and obviously you influence the audience size by the different interests that you pick. So audience one is going to be 500k. In and around 500k, um, it's not an exact science, it hasn't got to be super specific. As it says there, a tolerance of plus or minus 100k. The most important thing is that you're not testing audiences that are all the same size. So with ad set two, go up to around a million, ad set three, around 1.5, 2, 2.5, um, and so on. Just test a wide range of variety of audiences in terms of its size. Now, the reason why the size is so important because to get to different sizes, you have to have kind of like a different, like a different level of broadness when it comes to the audience. Obviously, a 5 million audience size is going to be a lot more broad versus a 500k. So essentially, you're testing super specific to broad audiences to essentially see which one responds the best, which one you get the best results from, which then kind of like clearly indicates at the end of the test 
um, which one you need to kind of pick to then duplicate into this optimization and scaling phase. The placements for this test are going to be Instagram and Facebook newsfeed only. Now this is just for the test. When we're scaling, we're gonna open it up to a lot more placements. But the reason I like to stick to the newsfeed only when I'm testing is because it's like the biggest real estate on somebody's mobile device. It's the biggest real estate on somebody's desktop. It's right there in front of their face, taking up the biggest amount of space. So you've got a higher chance of somebody actually acknowledging it and then choosing how to react to it, whether they just scroll past it or whether they actually click on it or comment or share it. Every time they do something or don't do something, it actually tells you something um, about the audience. Daily budget is gonna be five pounds, so five pounds over 10 ad sets for three days is 150 pounds in total. When you're testing audiences, it can often lead to a loss. A lot of people want to test and see a profit from their test, which it is possible, but what I guess what I'm trying to say is don't be too worried if you don't make a profit back from the testing stage. 150 pounds in the grand scheme of things is not a lot of money. It only takes one or two good ad sets to make tens if not hundreds of thousands of pounds. Your conversion window is gonna be seven day click or view. The reason for this being is because the longer you can have it, seven days being the max, obviously, then the more data that is kind of included and, and contributes towards the optimization of the ad set. So as I've pretty much already explained, the only difference between each ad set here is the interests you are targeting. And the reason for this is we wanna create the fairest test possible. If there's too many variables from one ad set to the other, then obviously when it comes to making that fair comparison, it's obviously really difficult to do. The next steps after three days, switch off all of the ad sets unless they're profitable. Obviously, if they're making you money, you might as well keep them running and milk them for as long as possible and try and recoup some of those testing costs. But after the three days, you're gonna compare the click-through rate, you're gonna compare the cost per link click and compare the CPMs for each audience. And then we're gonna choose the best performers to duplicate on and scale. And like I said, this will be covered in a video later on. So hopefully you guys are still with me. Um, any questions whatsoever up to this point or for anything else for that matter, just comment them down below. I'll respond to everybody so I will get back to you. Um, I wanna make sure everything is crystal clear to you so you can follow this strategy accurately. Um, anyway, so I've skipped ahead into my account manager. I've created a new campaign. I'm gonna call it the dog pool test, just so we know what it is from the overview. And we're gonna leave campaign budget optimization off. We want to decide how Facebook spends our money and what they spend it on to make sure each ad set gets its fair chance. So the ad set name, this is gonna be ad set one. So I'm gonna put 500K and leave it as that for now. Um, we want to make sure the event location is set to website. Obviously, this is where the conversion events are going to be happening is on our website. And then next up, you need to go ahead and choose the correct event, which is obviously going to be purchase. Moving down into the budget and schedule, fairly straightforward, changes to $5 or £5, depending obviously um, what your currency is set to. Um, the start date, you can leave it as what it is, what the default kind of start date will get set to. If you want to put it to midnight, that's absolutely fine too. So it gets a full 24 hours, completely up to you. Just make sure you let it run. If you do start it, say at midday, just make sure it has a three, uh, a full, I can talk then, um, a full three days of running basically. Next up is the audience. So this is where the kind of differences will occur between each ad set. So we're gonna to stick to one country. This is a US store I'm advertising to. So the location is gonna be the US 1865, all genders. Hit edit on the detail targeting and make sure you untick this box. What we wanna make sure is Facebook stick to within the parameters we set. So when we set an audience size of around 500K, it sticks to that audience size. It doesn't just go off into the millions and target um, whoever they want to basically. I'll illustrate this in a second and how important it is. Um, when we put the interests in. So when it comes to picking the interests to target, this is a skill in its own and probably worthy of a video. I've done videos on it in the past, but perhaps I could do an up-to-date one. The interests you pick aren't random. They have to be relevant to the people who are most likely to purchase your product. So to give you an illustration, um, let's just put dogs in for now. If Facebook's playing up and does that sometimes. Uh, dogs as an interest and see what audience size that gives us. 87 million people, which is obviously just crazy, crazy broad. It would cost a significant amount of money to start testing this audience and for Facebook to learn who your ideal customer is basically. So what we're gonna do is hit narrow audience. 
Now don't just go random, think about the products you're trying to sell and think about who would buy this. So being a dog owner, it gives me an advantage because um, I have a knowledge of the niche if you like and an interest. So with this being a dog pool, then I have to consider what type of dog owner is gonna be buying a product like this. Probably people with large dogs that are probably black dogs too because they suffer in the heat the most and obviously by having a pool, um, then it helps keep their, their dog cool, which is a safety aspect to it, like a health aspect to it as well. Um, so I'm gonna start off by putting a large dog breed in here, something like a German Shepherd. German Shepherd and see what that does to our audience size. 7.8 million, so that's still very, very large. So I'm gonna go narrow further um, and think of some other large dog breeds. Uh, let me think. So if you hit a blank wall and not really sure what to do, it's a pretty simple strategy, but if you just put German Shepherd in there and then hit suggestions, Facebook are usually pretty good at giving you quite accurate um, suggestions which are similar to the interest you put in so let's have a look through and just find some other kind of large-ish dog breeds so Labrador let's put Labrador in just make sure you go back obviously and delete the original German Shepherd which takes us down to 710,000 which is perfect so it's 210k over the 500k which we wanted to go for but look at this it's not an exact science as long as you're in and there or thereabouts and the next ad set you create um, is like big enough to not be considered similar enough to this, um, then you're absolutely fine. So just going back to this detail tag and expansion box, if I just kind of illustrate the importance of this, um, the potential reach is 710,000 people. Facebook have a pool of 710,000 people to test this particular ad in. If we tick this, you can see it goes up to 23 million people. So it can make your audiences super, super broad and it can significantly affect the results of your ad set too. So let's just go back up and rename this to 710K. So when we're looking at our ads later on, we can see um, which one is clearly performing the best. So let's carry on into the placement section. Go ahead, hit manual placements, get rid of audience network, messenger. Uh, we'll keep Instagram obviously because we'll keep the feeds. Now when we're scaling and optimizing, it's fine to use these or if you're using retargeting ads, certain placements are better than others. But for the test, we wanna make sure that eyes get on our ad so we can be sure that somebody has seen it and reacted to it. Even if they just scroll straight past it, that in itself tells us something. Let's get rid of search, get rid of in-stream, get rid of stories. Uh, let's expand this out and get rid of this, 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 and this. And we're just left with Facebook newsfeed and Instagram newsfeed, which is perfect. Move on to optimization and ad delivery. If you just hit show more options, double check by default, I'm pretty sure it should come up as seven day after clicking or one day after viewing, but just double check that everything is set up correctly. And that in its essence is ad set number one. So to create ad set number two is fairly straightforward. If you go back to your ad set um, and just hit duplicate, and we'll go to existing campaign, dog pool test, number of copies, one. Just do it one at a time, just so you don't kind of overwhelm yourself. It might take a little bit longer in terms of time, but that's absolutely fine. You wanna make sure everything is crystal clear and you can fully understand exactly what it is you're doing. Let's get rid of this. And then all you need to do simply is go back to here and manipulate this to bring up your potential reach box. Now by default, Facebook will always, will always tick, sorry this detail tag and expansion. So make sure you untick that before you start playing around with the interests and we'll just X off these and we can start again. So German Shepherd, 7.7 .7 million. Now we're in fact, let's put Labrador back in here. Labrador, for some reason, Facebook has been doing this a lot recently, which is really annoying. Labrador, and then we can add more to this. So if we hit suggestions and just try and bring it up to, let's go for Golden Retriever takes us up to 2.5 million, which is still pretty huge in fact. Let's get rid of that and go for something a bit smaller. So Golden Retriever was 17 million pretty much. Let's go for St. Bernard, which takes us up to 1.3 million, which is perfect. So again, this could be used as ad set number three or ad set number two, depending on like when we're playing around what sort of audience's eyes is we can get down to. So there is no exact science, just make sure the key kind of takeaway from this, I guess, is just make sure you test a wide variety of audience sizes. And with that being said, guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. Um, hopefully everything was crystal clear, but of course, um, just feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. Um, honestly, just post them down below. I will see them, read them, and get back to you. Um, don't forget to subscribe too if you wanna see the follow-on from this video, which is gonna be part number two. Before you go though, I just wanna show you that you 
Ecom Academy. Um, a lot of people ask me if I run a course because I'm from the UK and can give that UK um, perspective on things I do. It's called the Ecom Academy. There's some background information on screen now. Um, there is a free callback service too. So if you want to hop on the phone, talk to me directly and ask me any questions you have about joining, like what it involves, etc. And we can do so. With that being said, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.